Hi and welcome to Take Time to Create. Today we are going to do these little kawaii treats. Aren't they adorable? They're the cutest little things I've ever seen in my life. We're actually not going to do all of them, but I am going to show you the kit that I did these from and uh, my impression of the kit because I have done just about all of the little treats. Um, what I did to change it and yeah, all of those good things. So let me go ahead and, and show you. So let's go ahead and get started. Let me show you. Let me scoot these guys over. Let me show you the kit that I purchased. I got this so many treats. It's a klutz uh, book and it's a whole kit. And I saw this on Amazon actually. I ordered it, but you can get it at local stores as well. And is this not the cutest book? I mean, look at these little guys. They are so adorable. Look at the little pop tart. Oh my goodness. This ice cream cone. So, so cute. So what you get with this kit and I, so I've already opened it, of course, since I did most of them. This is a learning process for me. I'd never made these before. I have taken an embroidery class, so I know basic embroidery, but these little three-dimensional things, they're new to me. And oh, this little cupcake. This is the cutest little thing I've ever seen. So you get the book, which is great. Uh, it comes with a couple pages and these are your patterns. Uh, and they are all labeled. And so this is, you know, carrot. And we make this little cute carrot. Look at that. And you match it up in the book. And I don't remember where carrot is. Carrot's somewhere in here. Here we go, carrot. And it tells you one carrot. So you cut one out of orange felt and then two carrot top pieces. Oh, and carrot's a good example. It came with enough of everything that I needed and I didn't have any trouble except the lime green felt. And it looks like this is lime green and it looks like this is lime green and I used the lime green but I didn't have enough to make the pear as well. So I would probably make this out of dark green. Um, there's plenty of dark green left. Let me show you my felt. This is all the felt that came with the package. This is the leftovers. And as I was cutting, because I didn't know if I needed them, I even saved the little tiny scraps as well. But I didn't have enough of the lime green felt. Outlined out the uh, pear and I could get two and I could squeeze in one more, but I didn't have enough. So if you do this at home, I would probably do this at a dark green. Uh, or if you have more lime green uh, yourself, I would do that. I did email them and they have been wonderful. And I explained, I did everything according to the package. I, I did it all with the pattern. I did the colors and I didn't have enough. And um, Klutz has been wonderful. They actually said, they're like, we approved. We will send you out some more lime green felt. So they have been wonderful to work with. And that's another side note that most people won't have uh, need to interact with customer service, but I have been very impressed with customer service. So that's a good thing. All right, you get this, you get the felt, lots of felt. Um, I kept all of my little pieces. You have some polyester fiber fill to go in. Uh, so you, all of these guys are, are stuffed. Oh my gosh, this watermelon, holy cow. He is so cute. Okay, uh, I need to focus. because. <laughs> and you get a lot of embroidery floss. I will say also, um, the red color is more of a of a pinky red color. I, I didn't love it as well. It would work just fine. No reason why not to use it. But I grabbed out of my personal stash a red that matched a little better than um, the red that they had. That was just a personal preference. Also, they didn't give you a hunter green, like a dark green like this. You only got a lime green. And when working with like the apple here, I wanted something darker. So, um, oh, I used puffy paint there. Um, so I used, you know, lime green on this with the dark green, but anyway, that was a personal preference. So I went in my own personal stash. Uh, you don't have to do that. I mean, all of the embroidery floss that they give you is perfectly fine. My advice also is to pick up these little organizers so that you can keep your whole project organized. You don't have to, but that's just something I do. I like to do that. I think it's easier to work with it and to do the project. And it also came with uh, two needles. I don't know where the other one is. <laughs> anyway, I've got one left. <laughs> I think I probably put it uh, 
in another kit. Anyway, so uh, the needles, they're nice. They've got this great big eye on them. So it's easy to thread them and they work just fine. I used the same needle It's because it's two identical needles. I used it through the whole project. And it also comes with these little pre-punched eyeballs and cheeks. So cute. So you have the little eyeballs and the little cheeks. So it looks kawaii, already ready to go. Oh my goodness, so very cute. Let's see if I can, wait here, you can see it a little better, the little cheeks. Oh my goodness, they're so cute. So that's what we have here. And I think the kit is very well laid out. Like I said, I, I did all of these. <laughs> I really like to do these kinds of projects when I'm just sitting and I need a quiet moment. Um, these are just really wonderful to do this. So let me show you, you get all the instructions. Here's everything you get here. Um, and we are actually going to do together the little donut. It's the first project that you have in the book. It's very, very cute. And I wanted to um, kind of show you a few of the things that I've done a little differently than the book. Uh, I did add this ring. Oh, there we go. You can see it. So you can see the ring and, you know, just different things that I do with it. So let me show you. We're going to make the donut. Let me put all these other little guys away and get the colors out. And I'll be right back. All right, so I have pink and I have tan felt out. And let's go to the instructions for the donut. And they use the donut as the examples for the beginning. So it's really nice to follow along. It's so easy to do. And I know they say, oh, these are for kids. But I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I'm an adult and I do these, so I really love them. Anyway. So the first thing we want to do is cut out the donut and you are going to cut two, hold this up closer, two of the tan and then one of the donut frosting. So I have two of the tan and one of the donut frosting and I'm going to use pink glaze. I'm going to do the same thing. And when you're cutting, let me zoom this in just a little bit. Okay. So we're nice and close. Everything is giant. I'm just using a blue marking pin. You cut it off anyway. I did for a lot of them. I didn't even have a, a marking pin or I lost it. You can use a, like a ballpoint pin, works just fine. I cut on the inside of the line so you're not going to see it. And here's a secret. If it's not perfect, it is just fine. If it, um, nobody's going to compare the two. They're not going to hold up yours and compare it to the, the kit. So if it's not perfect, it's fine. Just kind of go with it. Trace it and I trace as close as I can to all of the other edges so that I save as much as I possibly can. Now I need two of the donuts and I'm gonna tuck this in the corner just like this. Don't forget to cut out the circle in the inside as well. And just like this. Save your pattern pieces because you can use them over and over. You can make them any color you want. You know, so if you wanted a chocolate donut or a vanilla donut or any other kind of donut, save them. And they do give you other options, which I love. <laughs> Look at all these other donut options. So they show you what else you can do, uh, which I really do like. Um, stick with, because you know you have the, enough felt for the original project, so stick with that. But if you have your own felt, or felt is not that expensive, you can always pick some up at the craft store and do that. Okay, so now we need to cut them out. All right. So now it's time to cut them out. Make sure you have sharp scissors. These are, oh, there you go. Now you can see them. <laughs> Sorry. All right, make sure you have sharp scissors. These are Singer brand. Um, I'll link them down below. Any pair of super duper sharp scissors, scissors will work. And I'm cutting just inside the line I drew, that um, trace line. If it's not 100% perfect, it's okay because you'll actually flip this over and this is now the wrong side. But I like to cut just inside that line. And you can see, sorry, I keep moving it a little closer to myself. Anyway, um, and if you need to go back and just trim off a little bit, that works too. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and trim these very simple to do and then we'll go ahead and come back and we'll start stitching because it's so much fun but anyway so let me trim these i'll be right back all right i have those two all done and let me show you how i get the center out so i fold it in half and i take 
my scissors and I'm just going to clip right in the middle, just like that, so I can get my scissors in there. And I'm actually going to cut slightly on the outside of my mark line so that it won't show up, just like this, and then we will have our donut. So, you can see we have donut top and bottom and the frosting, just like that. All right, so cute, okay. Sharp scissors, I tell you, they make the difference, all the difference in the world. So now we're going to, let's look at the directions. Tracing, and it, since we're doing the donut, it goes into really great detail about how to trace, what to trace, you know, all the great things. And then it talks about threading the needle. So if you need help with that, it talks about safety. It's talking about, um, you know, the starting knot, what you need to do with that, uh, adding faces. So that's the first thing we're going to do is actually add a face. And that's usually the first step in all of these because then this gets added on to other things. So um, here is the side and you can see some of my markings. So I'm going to flip it over. Oh, I need to trim that a little bit. My center's not quite a hundred percent as round as I'd like. Now, of course, it's not going to be perfect, but I got a little bit sticking in the inside. Trim it off, no problem. All right, so let's pick a face. I think this face is really cute, pretty easy face to do. This is the handiest thing. I was so happy when I found out that they gave us pre-punched eyeballs. Love it. Okay, so we've got two little eyeballs. Sorry if you hear footsteps upstairs. My son is doing stuff up there, so that's, the nature of being in the basement, sometimes there's ruckusing going on upstairs and you film when you can because that's what you get. All right, so I already had um, leftovers. So I have two strands of embroidery floss and I've got two little eyes and I kind of spaced them out. And with kawaii, you want to space them out a little bit more than than um, what you normally would do. So you don't, you don't want them right on top of each other. So um, we'll go ahead and add the eyes first, then we'll add the mouth. And let me tie my knots and then we will go ahead and I will show you how I attach the eyes. I'm sure there's more ways to do it, but this is just the way that I do it. Okay, so I'm gonna take the first eye and you don't wanna get, you don't wanna get too close to the center or when you stitch it, this one's a little close so you can see when you stitch it, the eyes are kinda tipping down. So I'm gonna kinda go a little bit toward the middle, just pick a spot, stick an eyeball on there. Um, anywhere you really put the eyes, they are so cute. So it's not a problem. So then I have it knotted on the other end and I'm just going to stitch. I just make a little X in the eye and that's it. That is the end of that. Okay. One eye is on. Let's do the other eye. Let's put it right about there. Oh, that's so cute. All right, both of the eyes are on. Now this needle works just fine. I used it for all the other ones. It's a little thick, it's a little chunky. Um, it's not my favorite, but I can see that they did this because a lot of children use this. So I understand why they picked it. It still doesn't have to be my favorite. Now what I'm going to do is take a ballpoint pin and I'm just going to lightly make a little smiley face because I know the pin won't bleed. Lightly smile, there we go. Doesn't have to be exactly perfect. And we are going to backstitch to put the smile on. To backstitch, um, let's see where they tell you how to do this. Okay, they have a whole section on how to backstitch when you're adding the mouth. Um, very easy, the instructions are very good. So just follow the instructions or there's a thousand and one YouTube tutorials out there if you're not sure how to do it. But what I do is I just come up in one little spot and then I'm gonna go down just a tiny bit away. I'm not making giant leaps. And don't pull your thread completely taut. I leave it just a hair loose because if you pull it all the way taut, it's going to um, really pucker the felt. And then what you do, now the next step is you're actually going to stitch up a little bit. So I'm gonna come up just a little bit away from where I was. So you see there's a gap. Then I'm going to go down where my, the other stitch was, where the, my most previous stitch was, and I'm closing that, that, that gap. That's it. That's how you do a back stitch. 
Um, and let me go ahead and add some more. If your smile is not 100% perfect, that's okay. And they really start to take personality and take shape as you go. Okay. And you can make back stitches as big as you want or as little as you want. Just like that. Mine ended up having a little bit pointed of a mouth. I think it's still really cute. I'm going to leave it. If you don't like it, take it out and do it again. It's just thread. It's not like it's permanent. You haven't you haven't knotted it off. So, um, and then I just go on the back and I um, slide it under some thread, and then I just scoop it under there twice, and then I pull it, and there we go. Trim it, and you have a little face. Now, of course, you can leave your face like this. You can see the difference. Look at that. I have a smaller mouth here. It's a little tiny, cute mouth. This is a bigger mouth. They're both adorable. They both work. Okay. I'm actually going to leave this because I stitched the sprinkles on here, which work great. They look adorable. But I then learned a different method that we're going to do at the very end. And the little dots on the eyeballs... I tell you, that's what makes them real. That's what makes these the cutest things on the planet. So we're actually going to wait and we're going to do this all at the very end. I'll show you. Once again, this is how I've altered the uh, pattern. This is how I've altered the book. Um, and I just kind of did it my way. So I put the spare back on the little card here because I am not throwing away this thread. I've got lots of embroidery thread left over, so I'm keeping it. And we're going to go on to the next step, which is, let's see here. They want you to add sprinkles next, but like I said, I don't want to do that. Now we're going to do the whip. Yep. So we're going to add the frosting to one of the tops. Just like this. And we are going to um, whip stitch around the outside. Now the whip stitch is the stitch you're going to do a lot of. They go in and they talk to you about how to do it. Um, and you're just going to whip stitch everything around. So this is, this is the stitch you use all the time. This is your popular stitch. Let me show you up here. You can kind of see it. My stitches are not perfect. They are nowhere near perfect. This is a skill I am working on. That's why I think these are perfect. They're, you know, small and easy to work with. All right. So what we're going to do is we are going to stitch around the outside of the donut first. All right, to whip stitch, you just pick a spot and I am going to um, pick right here. And since this is on the back side, nobody's going to see it. I'm kind of holding it in place. If you need pins, that works. I just figure I can hold it. And I came up from the back and I'm on the pink side. And then I'm just going to come straight down on the brown side, just like that, and I have one stitch. Now, you don't want to pull it too tight. Let me show you what happens. If you decide to pull it as tight as you possibly can, it makes these weird little dents in there. So, kind of to give it a little give. Um, you want it tight, but not suffocatingly tight. Then, you're going to come up. Here's my first stitch, and then you're going to come up just a little bit of ways. I don't have a measurement, just, just a wee bit away. And you're going to come up on the pink and go straight down in the tan. That's it. That's your whip stitch. So you're going to do that all the way around. Take your time. It's not a race. And um, if you don't love it, take them out. But I would say, you know, slow and steady. And, um, you know, your stitches don't have to be exactly perfect. And I can kind of manipulate them if I need to. And look at that. That third one's not perfect. I'm going to leave it. I like it. So um, I'll go ahead and do this and then we'll come right back because you really don't need to watch me do all of these. Might be a little tedious. Anyways, I'll be right back as soon as I'm done stitching the frosting onto the um, donut part. All right, so I have all of the um, frosting stitched on there. So cute, just so cute. All right, so the next step in the book is to attach the centers together. So what I'm doing is I am taking the two donuts and I'm putting them together and I'm using pink thread. Now, you'll see the pink on the back. Um, let me show you the one I've already done. You can see how it's pink on the back, but that's okay. I actually did this one wrong because I didn't read the directions. I left the inside and that's how I stuffed it. So don't, don't do it that way. <laughs> let's do how the directions say, and let's stitch up the inside first. Then we're going to stitch up the outside. That's how we're going to fill the stuffing. 
So what we're going to do is we're actually going to take one here and I'm going to start a little bit over here and I'm going to go through both layers just like this. So it's on the inside. This is where my knot's going to live so that it's on the inside. And then I've got my two pieces lined up like this. I am going to, um, actually did I do this backwards? I probably did it backwards. Anyway, so I'm now on the upside down. So I've got the, the thread on this side and I'm going to go through both layers just like this. So I'm going to come up here just like this and come through both layers. And just like that, I have one whip stitch. Um, I don't think this is the best way to do it, but that's okay. <laughs> well, like I said, I'm not the perfect expert when it comes to embroidery. Um, all right, I tried to change my battery. <laughs> um, so I got that all done and I finished the inside with the whip stitch. Now it's time to stitch the outside together. So you'll need to pick where you want to have a small opening, whether you want it down here on the bottom, up here on the top. If you want to add a hanger, let me show you. I've got some ribbon here. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. This is just some ribbon. So what you do is you will do it at this point. If you want to add a hanger on it and uh, you can use some ribbon, you can use thread, you can use whatever, and you just stitch it in there as you go. Um, and you just plan ahead. So you've got to kind of plan ahead. I of course didn't because that's kind of what I do. So I went and added this jump ring at the end. I just stitched it on so that I could hang it all on a string. This way works just fine. So you've got your two layers and I've got my donut here and straighten them up so that they are lined up. If you need to um, clip them together, do that. Um, or if you need to pin them together, that's fine. I just kind of leave them because the felt holds them. They don't slide too much. Now you want to go underneath. You want just the single layer just like this. So now my um, knot is on the inside and I'm just going to bring this around to the back and I'm just going to stitch up just a little bit of ways, just like that. There we go. Whip stitch, one done. Eight million more to go. I'm going to go around this whole donut and I'm going to stop, oh, about here or so. So I have enough room to stick my fingers in and, um, and get the filling in there. Now you don't want to go too big. You don't want to have giant bites back here. Try to keep spacing as even as possible and, um, you know, just go around your edge of your donut. These are not hard. Uh, I just love them. Like I keep saying, I love this kind of stuff. It just slows me down, gives me, you know, calm. And, um, it's just, I like it. <laughs> and you know, kits are nice. You don't always have to think of something new. All the instructions are there. And then I like to do the kit, um, you know, how the directions say once or twice. And then I kind of just do my own thing with them. I add my own thing and I'll show you like the sprinkles. I decided I like a different way to do the sprinkles and I will show you that and just slowly go around. You want to keep even spacing. You don't want it too tight or you'll be here forever. Um, if you go too big on your spacing, then your stuffing will fall out. So just kind of do your thing. Anyway, I'm going to finish this and I'll be right back. Okay. I have gone all the way around. There's a little bit of a gap. So I'm going to use my stuffing, the, um, polyfill. It comes with it, the, the stuffing. Now, if you don't have stuffing, um, sometimes I do kits and they don't come with stuffing. This is another reason why I keep all of my little scraps. What you can do is use your sharp scissors and cut them up into teeny tiny pieces. Not, you know, super microscopic, but mm, like that size. And you can use this as your stuffing. So I save all these because I don't like to throw this all in the garbage if I can use it. So I just keep it in a little baggie and it is stuffing for other projects. Um, or if I keep doing this and I run out of stuffing and I'm doing more to use up, you know, all of this felt, which I have quite a bit left. Um, I might, you know, if I need more stuffing, I can definitely use that. And so that is just a little trick I do. All right. Let me pull. I still have my thread on here. I just pulled the needle off and I have a crochet hook whatever you have to shove it in here is just fine. I kind of just stick a bunch in the little hole and then I take the back of the hook and I shove it around. Not really 
<laughs> not really super complicated with this. Um, fluff it up, stick it in there, off you go. You want it fluffed enough so it fills it out, but not too too stuffed where it um, comes apart and, and you've got, you know, the polyester falling out of the stitches and you want to go all the way around, get all the way to the backside first and just kind of, you know, manipulate that stuffing all the way around. Okay, I'm going to do this and then once I'm done stuffing it, um, we will stitch up the edges and finish up our little donut. All right, now we've got, he's overstuffed now, like he had too much dinner, turkey dinner. All right, so I'm just going to continue my whip stitch around uh, and secure him just like this to make sure that he is all secure. Um, just the same stitch around, just take your time. Um, it's best if you have enough thread to close so you're not having to change thread um, in the middle of this, but if you have to, that's fine. It, I mean, in the middle of when you're closing up your seam here. I had to change thread. I ran out midway, um, which is fine, but it's just easier not while you're getting the stuffing done. But if you have to, you have to. All right, now I am going to um, secure it. Just knot it. There we go. Isn't he cute? Okay, so what we're going to do now, I'm going to show you how I finish him out. All right, so um, what I do, you can always stitch the sprinkles on, you can always stitch them, and you can always put the little dot in the eye with a um, French knot, but what I use is um, just fabric paint. I like this dimensional fabric paint. Um, I have some scrap pieces over here. I always kinda, you know, get it started so it doesn't blob on. And I think once you add the little dots on the eyes, it just, I mean, look at that. I think it just adds exactly what it needs. Um, I like it. It's a little easier than stitching everything on. That's my little bit of lazy coming through. Um, oh, this is a new one. I picked this up at my Creative Reuse Center, and it's never been used before. Wow. And it was like 50 cents, I think. I don't know, 25 cents, something like that. Oh, that's really cool. Um, this one's burgundy color, and then this one is, I think it'll work. I just got these... Um, from the Creative Reuse Center. So we'll see if they work. And this one's like a buttercup color and this one's um, golden blue. It's an iridescent blue. So it's really pretty. So let's see here. Oh yeah, that works. So I'm just going to take this and just draw some sprinkles on just like this, randomly around. Like I said, if you want to um, stitch them, definitely stitch them. But if you don't, that's okay. There we go. He is all done. So yes, I definitely recommend this book. This is the uh, So Many Treats. Um, I forgot to mention earlier, I bought this with my own money. This is not sponsored. This is just me reviewing this and showing you how I alter this and just showing you what I love um, and showing you how I create these with a kit. Thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification bell so you know when I post new videos. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook, and on my blog. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you guys next time.